This week on the show, we go behind the scenes at MJ Biz Vegas to show you some new technology from two of our favorite companies on the block. Also, ding dong, the witch is dead, the evil witch is dead. Jeff Sessions is out. What does that mean for the cannabis space? We'll debate that on this week's Two Sides. My name is Tim Strombel. Welcome to Rooted. Welcome to the show. In case you've been living under a rock, we've got some breaking news for you as Jeff Sessions has resigned or been fired, depending on which article you read or who you believe. Either way, he is out as attorney general and we're left wondering what it means to see the least informed cannabis curmudgeon removed from arguably the most important government post to the cannabis space. Let's debate what could happen on this week's Two Sides. On one hand, I think this is great news for the industry. I mean, few people can have a worse view on cannabis than Jeff Sessions, though I bet Trump can probably find one. But perhaps there is someone out there who is fit for the job and also realizes the difference between things like hemp, CBD, and cannabis from actual Schedule One narcotics like heroin, cocaine, and so on. I mean, the tiniest bit of book learning would lay it out for you. Now, I understand the attorney general doesn't make the law, only enforces them, but so do people like judges, police officers, and other public servants. And those people who thrive in those roles do so because they take an all-encompassing look at situations when they're presented. It's not just the letter of the law. The writing is on the wall for the cannabis space, not just in America, but around the globe. And the time for 70s era prohibition slander towards the industry needs to be over. I mean, anyone with half a brain could weigh the upside of the cannabis movement versus the downside of it and see the clear-cut benefits for legalization. I'm not saying they need to support legalization, but they need to be like a good judge in the courtroom and consider the timing and the situation in addition to the letter of the law, not just one by themselves. I think that person is out there, and if the right person can be appointed, we might look back at this Jeff Sessions firing as one of the last dominoes to fall before legalization. But I'm not holding my breath. On the other hand, perhaps they find someone even worse for the industry to replace Jeff Sessions. I mean, I would have thought it would have been impossible to find someone like Jeff Sessions in the first place. Someone whose views on cannabis are straight out of the 1960s prohibition era where you could just make stuff up and have it be believed as fact. Man, those were crazy times. Glad we're not there anymore. Fake news, right? Uh, anyways, it stands to reason that if they found good old Jeffrey somewhere, they could probably just go back and look under the same bridge to find another troll. But if you think about it, for as bad as Jeff Sessions' views on cannabis were, still are, he really didn't do too much to hamper the industry. I mean, nothing that his predecessors also didn't try. Maybe that was the problem. I mean, President Trump has said he supports the cannabis industry at times, but then again, he said countless things to your face when the opposite is true or the opposite happens, like when he said he would bring jobs back to Ohio and then GM closes production plants and the state loses 15,000 jobs and their economy takes a huge hit while GM continues to thrive. I mean, this could just be another one of those scenarios. To the public, he's giving his full support, but behind the scenes, he gets rid of Sessions, someone who wasn't doing enough to curb the cannabis movement. After all, there's a huge campaign donation from Big Pharma, Big Tobacco, and Big Alcohol waiting for Mr. Trump, and they all stand to lose money if cannabis is legalized across the United States. So perhaps Trump gets rid of Sessions and brings in someone with an even worse ax to grind against the cannabis industry. Now, some say the industry has gone to, or come too far and nothing could derail it at this point. Well, I say to those people, you've been saying that for years and it's still federally illegal. So until they legalize it, I don't believe that it's a foregone conclusion. Now, at least with Jeff Sessions, you knew what you were getting. And a lot of times the enemy you know can be better than the enemy you don't know. So what do you think? Do you think getting rid of Jeff Sessions is a win for the cannabis industry, or are we just gonna see a lot more of the same to replace him? 
hit up our Facebook and comment your thoughts and we'll share the results in a future episode. We'll be right back. Hey, we're Danny Keith, the founder and CEO of CCTV. Danny, I noticed you have your TVs here in the Green Bros booth. Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing with Green Bros? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a in-dispensary broadcast platform already that we're broadcasting the content like yours on Rooted. Uh, and we got together with Green Bros and started realizing that the same need existed in the hydro space. And so Green Bros makes such great content and we have a delivery mechanism. It just made total sense to go ahead and attack that space. So we're here trying to make the footprint and let it, know, let it be known that uh, hydro stores are coming for you. Yeah, not just in dispensaries anymore. You're gonna see them in your local hydro store. So keep an eye out, CCTV. Big thanks to Cannabis Club TV CEO, Danny Keith, for joining me while he was out at MJ BizCon in Vegas to explain a little bit more about CCTV. Now, we also had a chance to catch up with one of our favorite companies in the industry, Green Bros, as we met up with their CEO, Colin Reichert, at the Green Bros booth at MJ BizCon to check out the latest and greatest in cannabis harvesting technology. We were blown away. Have a look for yourself. Hey, we're with Colin Reichert, the founder and CEO of Green Bros here at MJ Biz 2018 in Vegas. Colin, fantastic show so far. We're on day two. Tell us about some of the new technology you have here in the booth. Oh, thank you, Tim. Yeah, so we're bringing our new trimmer, which is completely stainless steel and breakdown and, and uh, UL listed. It's a beautiful new machine. We have uh, our remediation product, which is called the Box. Uh, it's a sterilization for the industry. It's natural and, and does not uh, leave any residue and it's non-radiation, which is all pluses. Um, we also have, of course, our Green Vault guys uh, back with, a, with the Batcher and uh, the rest of our equipment is here. So it's a great show for us. Too much to fit in like a little speech. Let's go check it out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's, let's do it. it. So here we have the box, which is our newest piece of gear. And it basically is our remediation product. So instead of having to deal with radiation or whatever, this actually removes all your pathogens and uh, allows our, our customers to get their product uh, out to the market in a safe fashion. I, I mean, this is one of the things I'm most excited about, Colin, because I was talking to some of your sales managers and Alan from Purigen who created this thing. And the fact that you can sterilize crop, bring it back from you know mold or microbial infections, uh, you can infuse it with terpenes, which is crazy. You got right. that fire strain and you want to add a flavor profile to right. it. You can create your own mix, yeah. proprietary. Isn't I that mean, crazy? Right, so a, a, a machine that you would think has maybe this, this scope sterilization and actually has a really broad scope to it. It's an incredible piece of technology and we're just so happy to have Alan on board with us and be able to bring this out to our customer base and then of course out to the, the broader cannabis customer base. It's, it's a great product. We sat on a podcast yesterday and we talked with Alan, this machine designed initially for tissue sterilization in the medical field. Right. So I mean you're talking yeah. FDA compliance as safe as it gets yes. but he brings it to cannabis and now people are like it's too good to be true. They got to see it. They got to see it. And that's, again, like most of the products within the cannabis space and within the cannabis culture, there's a lot of show me, show me kind of attitude. And, and that really comes, you know, from years of being taken advantage of by, by poor product design, poor product development, and guys just selling shystery shit, basically. <laughs> but what it comes down to is now, you know, a company like Green Bros, we come out and we show you because the reason... The, the, the reason that our customers are in business is to be profitable and successful, and they don't need to be spending money on the stuff that doesn't work, right? So we're all about showing, and this box is absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So that's the box. What do you say we go check out some of the other equipment? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. All right, Colin, now we're looking at the Model M, which is one of the latest products Green Bros has put out. Now, you're looking to build machinery and make products that are for compliance for years down the road. Can you tell us about how this machine fits in that mold? Yeah, so that's exactly right, Tim. We're looking at the future and, and, the, and the regulations that our customer base is already seeing but are definitely gonna to have to become compliant with as we see uh, legalization happening throughout the United States. And of course, our, our partners in Canada, they already deal with Canada Health. And uh, you know, basically, you have a machine that's surgical steel, so it's completely uh, you know, compliant from a materials perspective. If you open it up, it's really simple to break down. Um, you know, it takes a couple of, couple of seconds, really, total to take the machine completely apart, which is new. Um, and everything on it is cleanable, so you're not setting with, uh, with any crevices or places where you can't get to. Um, and so the whole concept is cleanability and functionality, right? So it's still the same quality equipment that we've always made and the same quality of trim 
that we're famous for, except this time we have nailed the breakdown ability of the machine completely. It even comes to the point where you can take the barrel out of the machine just like wow. that. And now you have a completely complete access to the internal side um, and wash down, wipe down right in here. You see, you just wipe that off and everything comes right out of the machine. It's just that simple. Now, going backwards is the same process. Once you've wiped it out and cleaned out your barrel, you just bring it back in. And what's the difference in the surgical stainless steel as opposed to just stainless steel? That was a quality issue, right? There's a, that's a hot, usually has to do with the carbon content. It's more acid resistant, stain resistant. It's a better quality uh, of material. It's, it's what we've always used in, you know, when they say surgical, it comes from the idea of using it in surgery. So it's a, it's a higher quality material for sure. And so you just took this thing apart and you put it back right. together in under a minute. That's <laughs> right, that's, that's in crazy, right? You would think, uh, you know, with a machine that does what this machine does, that we'd have to take a lot of time. But honestly, it just goes right together. And you've moved all, I see you moved all the electrical from inside to now on the side. There's a little operator yeah. panel over here. That's right. So you just have your, your control panels on the, on the side and it's also movable. So it's not, it's not tethered, it's tethered, but it's not connected directly to the, to the main machine. So we are UL listed on our, all of our electronics, so the 508. Um, and then we're also CE with these new products. So we're, and, and this is all built within GMP and best practices. So um, as we go forward and get that certification for, for our European partners, um, that's the goal. I mean, make a machine that not only can you trust to do the work you need, but you know that you, when you put that machine in your shop, it's gonna be compliant and you're not gonna have issues with any regulatory body, so. Awesome, what do you say we go check out one of the other machines you guys have going on? Let's do it. Let's do it, man. All right, now we're here at The Sorter. This is a product you debuted at the show last year. It went right. through a lot of revisions, yes. and now it seems like it's the final perfect model you've brought. So tell us why people should be using this. What's the advantage? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because it, you, may, you may not even know that sorting is something you have to do, but honestly, uh, sorting allows you to take different levels of product and provide and put them in different places, right? Some guys make perfect pounds and they'll use like the top three portions and they'll put those and they'll remix and combine those so all their pounds look the same. So your package, it's all about packaging and presentation, right? So, and for us with the batcher that we have, this machine gives you real distinct sizing which helps the batcher to be more uh, precise and quicker actually in its operation because you can then make better combinations, right? If you just put all the same size material into that machine, it's gonna have a harder time mm -hmm. getting the right numbers. It'll still do it, but it's faster if you have multiple different sizes. So basically that's why you do it. You, you sort out your product and, and a, I mean, if you look all the way through our, our customer base, um, even like a Palomar, they didn't even know that they, had a, that they had a product that they could sell. And they use a very specific size, a very micro size, but they call it their, I'm not even sure what they call it, but they, but they have a very micro size and they sell it as, a, as, a, as an actual legitimate product. And people love it. People are buying it because they get a little bit better value for it. And it's still a top quality product and they've sorted it out. So it doesn't, may not look good in a large package, but together in a small package, it looks great and it's able to be sold, so. Now I was talking to one of your salespeople yesterday, obviously it translates to the batcher, but trimming, a lot of people don't know that you trim the same size flour together and right. there's a huge advantage to that. And you've said if you get the same size flour, you can almost pinpoint down to the second how long that flour needs to be that, in the machine. That is absolutely correct. If you have, if you have the time, you take the time to sort, pre-sort and get your general sizing before you go into the, into the trimmer, you're gonna have a much more consistent trim, a faster trim, it just works so much better all the way around. Now I don't wanna spoil any Thing, but that timing could be very important to a new trimmer you guys are gonna be putting out that has complete automation and smart technology in it, right? Right, absolutely. And, and that actually is a bigger picture part of a larger full processing solution that we're in process with a couple of our bigger clients on. And that is when you get down to, you know, that automation from front to back, but you also get that product consistency that we all know we need. So you, the way you do those kind of things is, is you just, do the steps the right way. You sort it pre-trim pre and you sort it post-trim. It's not a big deal. I mean, the sorter doesn't care. So I'm not letting too much out, but you stay tuned because we're going to be right on it as soon as you guys put that machine out because it's going to be a game changer, just like that box you guys just introduced. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited, excited too. Yeah. Hey, let's go check out the next machine. Let's do it. Let's do it.
This is the last big machine we wanted to highlight here. This machine you guys brought to market last year has been taken off. I've seen all over the place. The clinic, one of the top grows in Colorado, they consult all over the country. They use this bad boy and they endorse it, man. This thing puts up some numbers. Tell us about it. So, well, that's exactly right. And it's one of those, one of those machines that when you look at it, you instantly understand this is a money-making machine. You know, it adds so much value if you're micro-packaging because just in accuracy alone, the difference between this machine and what, what people can do by hand, that difference right there, just the accuracy will pay for this machine. So that's astounding. If you look at the value point of cannabis, you know, at the, at the what, it, at wholesale is three to $7 a gram, you know, and that price point, tenths of a gram, is way too inaccurate. You gotta be down in the hundreds. And this machine will actually go down to a thousandth, except for air moves thousands. So we actually dumb it down a little bit to go to the hundreds. And it's absolutely spot on at a hundredth of a gram. So when you're measuring out your one gram weights, you're getting 1.01, 1.02, bam, on the money. And it's all compressed air, right? There's no vibration or anything Correct. like that. And that's huge because you're not knocking anything off the flower. Right. People say, oh, you're going to knock all the trichomes off yeah. the flower. When you're moving it with air, it's a lot more gentle of a process. And, and it, it, that's exactly right. The whole system is designed to, again, like everything we do, take cannabis and treat it the way it's supposed to be treated. You know, it doesn't have that exterior shell, so you can just throw it everywhere. It, it's gentle. It needs to have low impact movement and air is the perfect vehicle for moving cannabis. Not to mention, I'm seeing a touch screen right here. I'm seeing the fact that this can basically work with any size container. Yep. And that's huge for the market because everyone's putting out a different size container. Yeah, absolutely right. And the other part of it is this really simply moves into being completely automated into a jarring line, which we already have out in the field today. So it's, it's that next step. When you see stuff being manufactured or produced in any other industry, you see the same kind of stuff. Jarring lines for packaging, you know, super simple. Automatic weighing and batching machines, super simple stuff, right? Complex in some respects, but basically stuff that we all need to have in order to be competitive in this incredibly competitive market. And from what I'm understanding now, instead of having a group of a dozen or so people sitting with little chopsticks trying to package, you have two people, you know, four if you want to really power it down, uh, power it up. But you can run this easily with one person up, one person down. And I watched the video of the clinic, they're getting 20 packages a minute as yeah. opposed to three or four. And, and you add that up over hours or even the course of a day and you're putting some volume up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. The labor savings on it is, is incredible. The productivity and efficiency is incredible. And like I said, just, just the difference in accuracy pays for the machine. So if you look at that and then add the, all, the, all the other uh, points that people look at when they're buying equipment, you realize really quickly this machine pays for itself just like that. Colin Riker, founder and CEO of Green Bros. Don't forget to check him out, greenbros.com. Colin, we did all the hard stuff. Let's go get a beer, man. Let's do it. Let's go, man. Let's, right. let's go get a beer. All right, we're still with Danny Keith, the founder and CEO of CCTV here at MJ Biz 2018 in Las Vegas. Danny, your technology, incredibly easy to use for new dispensaries or hydro stores now that want to bring it online. Tell us about how easy it is to use. Well, the secret's out. We are going into hydro stores. And, uh, you know, when we built this network, we really listened to the bud tenders, the customers, the content providers, and the advertisers to understand what it's going to be the best delivery mechanism in the easiest way, you know. Let's just face it, we're in the cannabis industry, people lose remotes. One of the things that we've done is we've actually built the remote into our phone. So every one of our TVs uh, comes with a text number that you send a six digit code to. Once you have that six digit code, you can start the TV um, just like a normal remote. You can adjust the volume, you can change the channels, and you can take it back to the guide. So we just, one of the aspects that we learned uh, in sitting in dispensaries and watching our network with people is, where's the remote? We got it. Check them out, CannabisClub.tv to learn more. These guys are making some moves. Welcome back to the show. Do you love podcasts? Well, so do we. And we just recorded a live podcast from Podcasters Row while we were out at the MJ BizCon in Vegas a short while ago. Now, we had a ton of fun recording the show, and you can find it as well as all of our other podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, or our host website, StayRooted.com. Time now for our favorite thing this week, and in looking around to see what tickled our fancy the most, we found a handful of good news we wanted to share with you in this episode, so get ready for our first ever favorite things segment. 
First off, Maryland's medical cannabis sales are vastly exceeding expectations in the state's first year of medical legalization. Now in 2017, market research predicted around 46 million in 2018 sales, but now that data is saying the number could reach as high as 100 million by the end of 2018. Great news. Elsewhere, Massachusetts recreational cannabis sales began recently and have already generated millions in sales, which is great for Massachusetts and its towns as there's a 20% tax on cannabis they can benefit from. Now, you think that's high, no pun intended. Well, consider that Massachusetts taxes cigarettes at a 40% clip and count your blessings. Moving on. South Korea became the first East Asian country to legalize medical cannabis. Sure, it'll be tightly regulated, nothing like the marketplace you see in the US or in Canada, but it's a huge step as now South Korea becomes the coolest, most chill East Asian country while sharing a border with the lamest, least cool Asian country, North Korea. Lastly, Facebook has had a ton of misses lately and their stock is in a downward spiral, but they did manage to do something that makes sense as the tech wizards have reopened search results to include cannabis businesses and those that support them. No, this is not the same fake news that Facebook has let run rampant on their platform. Rather, this is a positive step for Facebook embracing the cannabis space. Thank you. However, their regulations still remain vague on cannabis companies overall, even being on Facebook, so your account can still be suspended or shut down with no warning, reason, or repercussion. So continue to use Facebook at your own risk. There you go. Those are some of our favorite things this week. Which one was your favorite? Hit up our social channels at Stay Rooted across the board and let us know what you think. That's going to do it for us on the show this afternoon. Big thanks to Green Bros CEO Colin Reichert for the Killer Booth Tour, Cannabis Club TV CEO Danny Keith for joining me out in Vegas as well, and of course to Marijuana Business Daily for granting us a media pass to cover the event. Thank you very much. We can't wait for next year. As for this show, it's over. My name's been Tim Strombel, and I'll remind you one more time to work hard, be humble, and stay rooted.